Hi there, Peter of England. Just like a number 10 London bus, you don't see one for an hour and then five all come along at the same time. So this is my uh, fourth video in as many days. Um, I'm going to speak today on the following topic. We first did constitutional uh, conundrums, constitutional uh, conspiracies. Uh, when we've gone through the, the role of the free man movement, um, the sovereign citizen or the idea of uh, subjects of the crown and the role that the Vatican has played in this. Soon there's going to be a webinar featured on that. But today what I'm going to do is uh, talk to you about economics. Uh, this is all very important because there is a major event coming up um, next week. And this is why I need to get this video out before the, uh, the shit hits the fan, so to speak. Um, and that is that the midterm elections are about to commence um, Monday, Tuesday of next week in the United States. And I believe that there is an agenda running in the background um, that is going to ensure that whatever happens, whatever the results of this election, there is going to be quite some civil unrest and major upheavals in uh, all areas of society. So the economic model is going to be the one that we are going to, to cover or concentrate on today. Um, and why I mention this is that Biden, the president so-called of the United States, has recently come out and made a, a declaration in effect that um, it could take several days uh, for the results of the midterm elections to be decided. And he stressed that people should be patient. Uh, so I hope this is not a, a replay of what's just happened in Brazil, where Bolsonaro has just lost the, um, the so-called election. Uh, and what's happened as a result, millions of people have taken to the streets, basically asking the question, well, who the hell voted for the other side? Um, so in this day and age, it seems that the stealing of elections, the falsification of ballots... Uh, and the inability to to really fathom who won and who didn't um, is extreme, extremely difficult. Uh, one reason I mention this is that it is probably one of the biggest tricks ever foisted onto human beings when uh, democratic channels had to be opened up to them, that the idea of a secret ballot, that your vote, the secrecy of your vote was sacrosanct, uh, was introduced and why it was introduced is so mainly nobody would know who'd voted for what. What I would actually think is a much more um, credible alternative and a much more truthful, transparent and uh, workable alternative is that everyone would have to declare, even to the extent of wearing something on themselves, which actually showed how they'd voted. In that way, elections couldn't be rigged. But how's, how it goes today, a 100 people can go into the box and vote for red... And blue wins, but because the other 99 aren't allowed to express, unless they all come together at the same time, who they voted for, there's no way of actually finding out who fixed the ballot box. And it's been done lots of times in the past. Uh, and one of the most, um, the most blatant examples was that, of that was in 1948, the senatorial um, elections in Texas. Uh, between Lyndon Baines Johnson and a guy called Coke Stevenson. And uh, the infamous Box 13 was filled um, and, uh, with, with fraudulent votes uh, and uh, the Supreme Court never allowed the box to be uh, opened. And so Lyndon Johnson uh, managed to steal that Senate uh, victory. And from then on, we know where it all led from then. So... As we go along now, I'm going to first read something to you. I don't usually read uh, quotes, but I'm going to read something to you which gives you a bit of a basis to start to understand, understand what the degree of duplicity and the degree of um, coercive behavior is actually running in the background of the economic and financial markets. Um, This is about silent weapon technology or the fact that um, certain members of the financial community at a very early stage realized that um, the 
the workings of the economic and financial system was all to do with energy. And if it was energy, then it also had a pattern for electrical energy. And therefore, the same equations that would be appropriate for um, the management of electricity and power could also be used in the economy. And to this extent, um, the, the, in 1954, this is what I'm reading to you now, and I'm not quoting the source, in 1954, it was well recognized by those in positions of authority that it was only a matter of time, only a few decades, before the general public would be able to grasp and upset the cradle of power. For the very elements of the new silent weapon technology were as accessible for a public utopia as they were for providing a private utopia. The issue of primary concern, that of dominance, revolved around the subject of energy sciences. Okay, so energy. Energy is recognized as the key to all activity on Earth. Natural science is the study of the sources and control of natural energy, and social science, theoretically expressed as economics, is the study of the sources and the control of social energy. Both are bookkeeping systems. Mathematics, in effect. Therefore, mathematics is the primary energy science and the bookkeeper can be king if the public can be kept ignorant of the methodology of the bookkeeping. Mr. R discovered the basic principle of power and influence and control over people as applied to economics. The principle was when you assume the appearance of power People soon give it to you. Mr. R had discovered that currency or deposit loan accounts had the required appearance of power that could be used to induce people, inductance with people corresponding to a magnetic field, into surrendering their real wealth in exchange for a promise of greater wealth instead of real compensation. They would put up real collateral in exchange for a loan of promissory notes. Mr. R found that he could issue more notes than he had backing for so long as he had someone's stock of gold as a persuader to show his customers. Mr. R loaned his promissory notes to individuals and governments. These would create overconfidence. Then he would make money scarce, tighten control of the system and collect the collateral through the obligation of contracts. The cycle was then repeated. These pressures could be used to ignite a war. Sound familiar? Then he would control the availability of currency to determine who would win that war. That government which agreed to give him control of its economic system got his support. So, that's in effect what's happening with the, the state of the financial markets from easily the mid-18th century, the 1750s, right the way through to today. And why I'm mentioning this is that the markets seem to be set, and I'm coming out here on a little bit of a limb and giving a, war giving a warning uh, so that when we will look at this video again in maybe a week or 15 days' time, we can see the efficacy of whether these predictions uh, 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 correlate. So it's always, always the sword of Damocles when people go out and say that they're predicting something to happen. However, what we have at the moment is a, a set of cycles, a set of panic cycles. Those can be seen at the moment, for example, if we take the Dow Jones Industrial Index, uh, which is hovering around 32,000 at the moment, but it's set to make probably a, a, what we call a, a waterfall drop. Um, it's made a, a, a series of highs that never attained the previous high. So what we have is a, a stair step dropping down. So the prediction really is, if we look at the channel that the, the, the Dow's framework over the last three months is operating in, if we see a fall in that market, then probably by, let's say the 14th of November or sooner, dependent on uh, what happens after the midterm elections, uh, there doesn't seem to be any upside. All the upside has been taken out of the market already, and the downside will be anything between a 12 to 15% drop 
in the Dow. So that would be taking it down to a range of around about 28,000 by, uh, I'd say, the 14th, 15th of November. Equally, why this is quite ominous is we've got a, a very strange pattern with Bitcoin, the old um, blockchain favorites, um, uh, economic sustainable platform to take them into the new world. Um, Bitcoin's been bobbing around with a base of around about 18,000 for about 140 days now. It's now currently, as of Friday, trading around, I think, 22,000. So if we're looking at that 12 to 15 percent drop on Bitcoin, then that's probably where we would be looking to see quite a, a dramatic fall in that, which would bring us in to maybe a, 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 it could be dropping to as, as low as 15,000. But um, the pattern that's forming there shows it's either it's going to break either to the upside massively or it's going to break to the downside. It hasn't got this 140 day pattern, if you want to go and have a look, um, to give it any confidence that the, the moving averages are doing anything apart from showing one way it's going to go and that's south. In addition to this, in the market, inflation is up everywhere and this isn't happening by accident. It is being planned by the people who are controlling the markets uh, at every level. Uh, house prices are falling. Rents are going up. Uh, what is happening here is, I think the best way to describe it is, the people are being prepped or prepared for the problem reaction solution. And in effect, what I mean by that is when the ATM machines stop spewing out the banknotes, then people are going to be left uh, asking, well, what do we do next? How do we pay for things? And I think if that's the outcome, then it is going to be a type of um, universal basic income attached to a, uh, a form of digital currency, which um, many of the banks and many of the financial institutions and so-called sovereign banking uh, facilities are already preparing for. Um, another thing that has always been a haven in the past uh, when times are going bad, when treasuries and the bond market and confidence is lost in governments because they don't think the governments have the ability to pay out on these bonds or gilts, uh, we have the, the, the resource of last resort, money pure, which is gold. But ask yourself this question, all you gold bugs out there, all you economic forecasters out there, any of you who've got common sense, just look and ask yourself, why with these turbulent times, when every means of finance is going to the war, when uh, artworks uh, are no longer as valuable as they were, when the Dow and all the equity markets are going south, why is it that gold hasn't gone the opposite way? It's always the investment arena of last resort. So even if it was just keeping up with inflation alone, because if inflation is going one way, then gold should be going the other. Um, so it isn't. Gold's at the moment trading at around about 16,000, sorry, 1,650 uh, for a troy ounce. Uh, and it could well be that next week what they're trying to do and they're going to show is that even gold is susceptible to going, going south when it should be actually going north. Because if it is the, the, the money of last resort, the investment arena of last resort, then surely people would be looking to that as being the one thing that has endured uh, empires and for millennia as always having an inherent value. So are they prepping everything to go to zero? Well, we have to see. But my, my advice is yes. But one very important caveat on this is, and don't get duped into thinking that just because there's a price being quoted on the New York Stock Exchange or COMEX uh, for the price of gold, that that is what the price of gold is. It isn't because for one very, very important reason is that the, the London fix rate and the 
uh, the COMEX and the New York uh, Exchange for the pricing of gold on a daily basis is only for contracts in gold. It's a synthetic false market. It is in no way connected with physical delivery. And the proof of that is on the, on the, on the COMEX market and on the New York market, you can actually uh, trade as much gold in contracts as your, um, as your, uh, your trading contract would allow you to, to do uh, or, or, or access. However, never are you obligated to actually deliver the physical gold. All that means ultimately is that you are either going to make a massive uh, gain or a massive loss. There is no physical delivery. So the physical gold is the thing that holds the price. And I would estimate at the moment that the physical um, rate for delivery on gold uh, should not be, uh, as it's been shown now, around $1,650, $1,640 an ounce, but more in the region of four to $5,000. So, but the, the main newspapers, the main um, uh, media for showing what the price of gold is, is, is a generic one. And so the price is, is fixed on that. So let's see where these things go. As I said before, these, these credit cycles move um, in, in, in cycles. And what we have at the moment then is a, a very, very precarious situation. And what I think is that the both sides, not only the Republicans, but the Democrats, seem to want to bring an end to the, the, the system as has endured for a long time. And we can see that in the United States, particularly, and this is a thermometer or a benchmark for the rest of the world, um, everything is becoming more difficult. Um, we've had fuel shortages. We've had baby milk shortages. In Europe, they're talking about um, now there being great shortages for fuel, whether that's oil or gas coming into the, the so-called winter. So uh, the caveat is who is benefiting from this? Um, it isn't the people, it isn't the likes of you and me. Um, so we're into a very, very difficult time. Um, none of the moving averages are showing anything other than signs for down. And I'm looking there, not short term moving averages, uh, a 200 day, a 150 day, 75 day moving average placed onto almost anything out there is, is showing the same pattern. So it is almost like they are wanting everything to go to, to zero, to be virtually worthless, so that if and when uh, a, a new form of um, money or currency is introduced, then this will be the, the savior. So this problem reaction solution is something that Weabank was originally put into place to fend off. Uh, so when I actually launched Weabank in 2015, that was in, in April, it was with the mandate to all of you out there to create your own promissory note, to have that then util, uh, usable uh, with, via the form of a, of a checkbook facility and to use exactly the same high street banking protocols that are in existence today and are the fundamental basis for the entire monetary financial system. Resulting that if anyone wanted to attack it financially or logically or um, societally, they would have to dismantle the entire banking and financial apparatus and uh, furniture to actually prove an argument against it. And this is why they never could and never did. And no one ever got charged or uh, fined or put in prison uh, for the issuance of a Weir Bank check. So I would invite you, if you have a checkbook out there, get it out, start using it. Um, we also would advise you, and I don't know whether I actually have, we have time for this because it would take a lot more of you out there at the moment than are watching this video uh, to come to the aid of Weir Bank to do something which I advocated a long, long time ago. One was the actual issuance of a, a um, a, uh, a banking card, which were actually launched, uh, but what was on plan after that is for the production of its own currency. Its own currency based on something called the uh, SDR, the Special Drawing Rights of the International Monetary Fund, so and the World Bank. So the notes were actually readied and are available, but 
not in quantities that would be sufficient to saturate, that's the, the front side, um, and this is the, the back, not in quantities that would be sufficient to saturate your, your local area. So time being of the essence, what I would suggest to anyone out there, any regional mover or shaker, or any individual who's got an idea of protecting his own, uh, his own community or uh, um, area, uh, I would suggest looking into the possibilities of preparing their own regional, local currency. It's nothing new. It's been done in the past. If you want to look at how it was done in the 1930s in Austria, have a look at the, what's called the, the miracle of Virgil. That's V-O with two dots on R-G-L. Virgil in Austria. Um, that was uh, a system whereby the local community came together and issued their own, their own script, their own currency. Uh, it worked very well, and it worked so well that the Swiss bankers forced it to be closed down. So there are many examples of local currencies or script being uh, issued, um, whether it's railway companies where the remote workers need a form of exchange or token, whether it's the oil companies from the beginning of the, the 20th century in faraway places uh, in Alaska or um, or in the Gobi Desert, where they would actually issue their own script so that the workers could exchange and use their own local currency without having to worry about banking facilities. So that's where I think you, you need to be looking. Um, Weirbank is still fully functional, fully operational. The checkbook does still remain the basis of all the financial transactions for the, the um, mitigation of debt not for the purchase of new acquisitions or for new goods and services. So it remains the bedrock of an alternative banking system that I would suggest most of you should uh, avail yourself of. Uh, we had lots of um, trolling, we had lots of shills, lots of attack when we first began. And is there any wonder what we walked into at that point? Because when Weirbank launched and was preparing to launch in 2014, if you cast your minds back that far, or if you can cast your minds back that far, um, there was not that much um, uh, activity on Instagram. I don't even know whether it existed then on Twitter, uh, but Facebook, yes. And so the social media just became alive with the opportunity of these shills and trolls and these naysayers and these agents of the government and the banking sectors to try and crush by using nothing but derogatory and personal attacks on the people who were involved in it, namely myself. And so, even though the Financial Complaints uh, Authority never ever issued anything derogatory about us, Everyone was saying, oh, the FCA have put out a statement saying we are bank is a, a fraudulent organization, blah, 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 etc. It never was. Uh, the newspapers picked up on things and started just to quote the former nonsense. And so we took the full brunt of the, the poison and the invective and the, the trash that is the techno social media platforms whether they were previously Twitter or Instagram or Facebook, um, it, it matters not. But that's what these organizations were designed to. They were set up and funded by DARPA and, um, should we say, covert uh, elements within the CIA to spy on their own, their own people, in effect, to the extent that um, uh, I think it was Facebook uh, the day Facebook launched, uh, the, on that same day, the previous or the precedent, I think it was called FaceLog, was closed down because it was a Dharma, uh, DARPA, sorry, not Dharma, a DARPA operation, that's the Defense uh, Department in the United States, and Facebook um, conveniently launched. So this is why the bad publicity was there, why it had to be uh, stymied or it had to be injured at no matter what the cost because it was a direct and realistic threat. 
Anyway, that being as it is, um, we need to look then going forward. This is a, a heads up, a bit of a warning, a bit of a prediction for me to stick my, my head out, um, out of the car window or the train window and say that I think it's going to get very nasty as of the midterms. I don't think either side is going to admit that they've, they've won or lost. Um, we're also talking as well, lots of Democrats in the United States are coming out and similar in the United Kingdom, um, saying that there should be now a period of forgiveness and, um, and forgiving and forgetting for all the overzealous activities that were thrust upon the good public throughout the time of the, the rage of the pandemic, as it was called from you know, February, March 2020, we're nearly three years into it now. And so as more and more information comes out, as more and more uh, doors are opened and carpets are lifted and we find out all sorts of corruption and the subterfuge were involved, um, we find now that they are playing the old, the old uh, service to self MasterCard, do whatever you want to the kind and well-hearted benevolent people and then as soon as they start finding out what you've done just turn and pl plead the old the old card of oh please forgive us we were a little bit overzealous but we were doing it in your best interest until they do it again and again and again and again so that's really as much as I want to, to cover for now um, the next video um, I'm going to cover is this one the first one was the the constitutional conspiracy uh, aspect for the sovereign and free man this is an economics one just to give you an idea that everything everything the taxes the interest the inflation the money supply is all being manipulated and nothing absolutely nothing that you read within your financial papers the main press the financial times has any resemblance to reality. It is all lies. And one of the biggest, and fact check this, YouTube, the World Bank and IMF claim that there's only around about 186,000 metric tons of gold uh, above the surface on planet Earth. Uh, when you know how much has been uh, vacuumed up in the wars over time and how much has been historically mined uh, since probably at least 15 to 20,000 BC, you can understand that there is a lot more than that. The true amount is between probably between four and five million metric tons. So on the one hand, that's not Good news because it should deflate the price of gold, but on the other, it is good news to be able to tell you that the amounts of gold available are far higher than are, are being told, and that's why they are very carefully hidden in areas in, in, in Switzerland, particularly under the, the auspices or the guidance of the Bank for International Settlements. So, on that note, um, we are coming up to the next video. That will be on the nuclear threat and the history of the nuclear situation. Then I'm going to cover the trans agenda. Then after that, we will look at ways of restoring the picture while we still can, can find time to try and do this. After that, it will be the ET situation in detail and following that, the solutions that we can look on that. So... Uh, like and subscribe. This video is primarily going to be put onto um, BitChute and Rumble. It will appear on um, YouTube until uh, either it gets taken down because they don't like my opinion and that I no longer can invoke my um, Article 18 and Article 19 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which I have notified YouTube and Alphabet Inc., their parent company, that any of the videos that they've taken down are in violation of those articles, Article 18 and 19. And for those of you who can be bothered, I would suggest if you want to protect your free speech, then go along, download those articles and have them printed off and sent to anyone and also handed out to anyone on the street when you're exercising your right to speak and think as you see fit. 
because there are these sensors and systems of surveillance which are coercing your cooperation and actually limiting what you say. Okay, so thanks, subscribe, notify, all the rest. Uh, next video coming up fairly soon. Peter of England saying thank you.